Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Pro Guides Wild Rift video. My name is Nathan Ng, and today we'll be going over all the important settings in the game. We've tried everything out so you don't have to. There's a lot of ways to increase clarity and customize your game, so let's go ahead and get started. Wild Rift's most customizable setting is the ability to totally change the way that your hood layout looks. You can move pretty much everything on the screen, from your summoner spells to the enemy champion portraits. It's really important that you spend some time messing around with your button layout, figuring out the most comfortable way to use your important skills. We won't spend too much time on the graphics and sound options since those are entirely up to you. If your game is struggling to run, lower your graphics a little bit and you can maximize your performance. We're going to be focusing on the settings and options that can improve your gameplay, so make sure your game is running smoothly first. Our first major suggestion is to move your skills and scoreboard to the right more, making it easier to see the action that's going on in the game. The last thing that you want is to get hit by an Ash ultimate because it's covering up your buttons. To do this, look for a more customizable button layout in the control settings. Take a look at the default layout and one of our custom made ones. The default layout has some buttons towards the bottom center of the screen, which means that you'll lose valuable time when you're going from using your skills to your flash. To solve this, we moved over our summoner spell to the right side, adjusting the space between the skills and auto attacks as well. Our goal here is to put all the important things on the right side with the least used buttons on the left side. If you're worried about accidentally pressing something, feel free to adjust the spacing to your needs. If you ever heard the term fat fingering your spells, it really does take into account, quite literally, when you're playing a mobile game. After you figure out where to set up your combat abilities, you should make sure that everything is easily visible on your screen. I suggest moving your scoreboard and alternate camera over a bit just in case. Lowering the size of your buttons is a great way to get a totally comfortable setup. Try to adjust them based on your screen sensitivity and finger size. There is no right or wrong way to set up your layout, so go ahead and put things wherever you need to. Your layout will take some time to get used to, but it's worth messing around to make sure that everything is comfortable. Our layout is a great place to start if you feel lost. If there's any layouts that you enjoy, post a screenshot in the comments down below. Speaking of customization, our question of the day is, what's your favorite skin to use in the game? I'm a huge fan of the KDA skins, especially Ari's. Um, she's kind of pretty, and it doesn't matter. Let us know your favorite <laughs> down in the comments below. So, let's go back to our settings. We're going to be going through every adjustable option, starting with the first menu. Since this is still the beta, these options might move around once the game is released. It's up to you if you want to do an all chat, but we highly recommend at least keeping your team chat on. If you happen to have a couple of toxic teammates, because this is League of Legends in mobile version, the mute function is better than disabling the chat. This is the best way to talk strategy with your team when pings aren't enough. It's also really fun to trash talk in all chat, um, but you didn't hear that from me. Your scoreboard should be full screen, giving you the most information whenever you check the board. You want to see as much as possible so you can make the better decisions in the game. If you aren't able to see your opponent's farms and items, you may not know which to focus down in teamfights. Tanks want to optimize their builds for the highest source of damage. Your scoreboard is extremely useful, so keep it full, like your stomachs, because you're going to be so fed with a big scoreboard. Map brightness and fog of war brightness should be turned as bright as possible to help you with clarity. This is extra important if you're using an older phone, making things clearer if your screen isn't the highest quality. We suggest you turn on character inking for the similar reason. It will be way easier to see individual champion models, especially during the team fights. This will help you land more skill shots on the right targets. The targeting menu is where it's time to make some serious choices. These options greatly affect your gameplay, so it's crucial that you figure them out sooner rather than later. Our suggestions are focused on the highest diversity and skill cap possible, so try these out if you're trying to win more games. The biggest change you'll need to make is to your enemy champion display. While Drift doesn't automatically have enemy portraits on your screen, so you'll need to turn the portrait lock option on. With this, you can click on certain champions to focus your actions on them. When you press the auto attack button, you'll always go for that champion. This option is a necessity, even if it might take some time to get used to. Without it, there is too much that can go wrong in a fight. Let's go over an example. In a late game 5v5 fight, your priorities can change in a second. Once you get better at Wild Rift, you'll often switch between focusing two or three champions in a fight. If you can't select the enemy Varus, you'll never hit him unless he is low or close to you. I suggest trying out different button layouts if needed, including the ones that we suggested before. Having the champion's icon near your finger will make switching targets way more consistent, allowing you to make more precise decisions on the fly. Accidentally attacking the wrong target can totally change the outcome of a fight, so make sure you use this layout change as soon as possible. The next option is target priority. The standard option is to target the unit with the lowest health bar percentage, which means that you'll hit whatever is almost dead. The other option is to target things by lowest absolute health, which means you'll target whatever has the literal least health. Absolute health would always make you hit the enemy Annie instead of a Malphite, even if the Malphite was at 50% HP. The actual number in your health bar is what matters. 
Between these choices, we suggest sticking with the lowest health percentage. If you want to focus on specific champions, you should use the champion portraits instead of relying on the game's decision making. The force attack follow option will make your character run into attack range if you aren't in range. We think that you should keep this off, since there's no reason to lose control of your own champion. If you're having trouble remembering the attack range, spend some time in practice tool to get more comfortable with the ranges. The next option has to do with champion dashes, like Chinomir's third ability. You should always keep your dash and move direction on, otherwise you won't be able to go over walls or run away if you're too close to an enemy champion. It'll also give you less control over your skills, which means you may not be using it to its highest potential. Before we move on to the action buttons, we need to tell you about a giveaway that we're doing. From now until January 14th, we're giving away riot points, coaching sessions, pro guide points, subscriptions, and so much more. If you're already subscribed to our channel, that is the first step. All you really need to do now is join our community discord with the link in the description. Follow the steps in our discord's giveaway section and you'll be entered right away. Going back to our settings, we're moving on to the action section. There are three choices for your movesake and we found that the default and follow options are the best. Both of these give you optimal control over your champions, so pick which one feels better for you. Locked button centers refers to the way your ability indicator will work when you click on a skill. Keep this option off so that your ability will spawn right where you place your finger. If you turn this on, your skills will always start from the actual icon, which punches you for not being completely precise with your fingers. The action cancel method has two options, with the alternative allowing you to cancel an ability by sliding the indicator a certain distance away from the button. After some playtesting, we think that the alternate method is too complicated for something that you don't really do too often. The default cancel icon is easy enough to press when you need to. Moving on to the camera settings, aim panning forcible moves your camera wherever you aim an extra long ability, like Lux's ultimate. We found that keeping this option on made it easier to land long range abilities, so feel free to leave it on. Turning it off is a good idea if you don't enjoy your camera moving around on its own so much. Your camera pan sensitivity is mostly up to you. I personally play on about a 60% sensitivity on an iPhone 12, but this will be different depending on your phone. This is not sponsored by Apple, but hey, if you want to sponsor us, we're not really opposed. Try to find that sweet spot for quick information and easy aiming. Ability Minicamp is a nice tool for giving you a glimpse of the area wherever you use global or semi-global abilities. For example, you can watch your Draven ult fly across the map until it hits someone. We suggest keeping this on, it will give you all the info that you need without forcing you to look across the map. Keep in mind that this will automatically trigger, which means that it might turn into a team fight. Make sure you double check your button overlay settings and don't put anything too close to the middle of the screen. When you do see the screen, pay attention to what summary spells and important abilities the enemy uses. Since you're the only one watching, you can let your team know if the enemy mid laner used their flash. The last option in the camera settings gives you the choice of making a semi-locked camera. This way you can move around the focal point of your camera instead of having it centered on you. We found that this isn't a bad option, but found that the default locked camera is better for a game like Wild Rift. There just isn't enough time to adjust your camera when it matters, making it hard to use without preparation. The final section goes through the utility settings in the game. The first one is called the minimap autopathing, giving you the option to click your minimap to move forward. You can also hold down the area to view it, giving you the flexibility with your minimap. For these reasons, we suggest keeping autopathing on. While your character is moving, you can look around the map and gather information that you wouldn't be able to do while you're going somewhere. If you find yourself accidentally clicking the map, feel free to turn it back off. The next option is warding aim assist, where the game tries to help you place wards inside of bushes when possible. We found this to be pretty annoying, so you should probably turn the setting off. There are a lot of times you don't really want to ward a bush, and fighting with the aim assist is also frustrating. Level up suggestions is a great setting, giving you the standard leveling order for your abilities. If you're unfamiliar with the champion, Wild Rift will tell you exactly what you should level up. You can always feel free to level up whatever you want to, so this option isn't actually hurting your gameplay at all. Once you're an expert in the game, feel free to turn the suggestions off. On the other hand, auto level up should always be turned off. This way you have control over what skills you're investing in. With how versatile the game is and how ever changing it could be, you can't rely on the automated system for making choices. For example, Janna mains decide on leveling their 2 or 3 ability based on how the game is going. Sometimes you need the big shields and the games want you to deal damage. The order of abilities will change upon your playstyle, so feel free to try maxing different things first. If you have auto level up on, you won't be able to make any of these important choices. We found that the 10 second auto setting is great if you get distracted and accidentally forget to level up before a fight. That will wrap up our ultimate guide for Wild Rift. Some things like champion portraits will take you some time to get used to, but you'll thank yourself later. Don't forget to answer our question of the day in the comments. We really love to see how you guys feel about Wild Rift. Thank you so much for your support. As always, thanks for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.